Welcome to the 8 Billion Project, where we're on a mission to make an impact by discovering and sharing the purpose of every person on this planet. I'm your host, Lisa Florida. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 8 Billion Podcast. I am your host, Lisa Florida, and today we have a special guest. Guest, excuse me, it's Mr. Bill Raymond. Raymond, right? Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bill Ryman is a real estate broker and luxury home builder in South Florida. For much of Bill's life, he has always found success in a number of things he has pursued. However, an injury would end his college football career and would change the trajectory of his life. Having grown up in the industry, he went on to become a top producer in real estate and lead one of the most successful construction companies. With a proven track record of millions in residential home sales, he now specializes in new home construction and currently owns an award-winning construction company, RK Ryman Construction. Constantly looking to improve himself with his forward-thinking strategies, Bill is the host of The Real Build Podcast. His mission is to help people with one of the most significant investments of their lives. Please help me welcome Bill Raymond to the 8 Billion Podcast. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, please. I need to say congratulations. <laughs> I love welcome, it. Thank I should say. Yeah, thank you, Lisa, for having me. I really appreciate you having me on today. Great intro, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, you <laughs> redid that. Yeah, it was nice. So thank you. I appreciate I, it. I could forward this to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it. Yeah, yeah. I'll use it. I'll put it on my LinkedIn. <laughs> well, actually, I'd like to, you know, I really do apologize. Is it Ryman or Raymond? It's Ryman. Yeah, Ryman. I've gotten Raymond. I've gotten Reman, it, but it, it, my whole entire life, but it is Ryman. So yeah, it's spelled like Reman and Raymond. So I get, I get it. I get it all the time. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was practicing it. I was going over some of my <laughs> social media posts. And, you know, sometimes you always have, it's just, just like me, right? It's it's spelled Liza, but it's Lisa. And so uh, everyone's telling me, and I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. the way it's spelled sometimes. Yeah, I always <laughs> tell people too, when, you know, just on their notes and stuff, just spell it R-Y-M-A-N. That'll make you remi re remember Ryman. Ah, <laughs> that, that's what it is. When I yeah. listened, like when I saw one of your, your social media posts, I was thinking, oh, it's like rhyme and reason. So that's yeah. how then I messed it up during the intro. <laughs> yeah. I get it all the time. I've had it since forever. So it's just, yeah, it's, I'm used to it. Well, welcome to the 8 Billion Podcast. Thank you. And thank you so much for your time. I know it's so precious. And yeah, we were just talking it. about that. Uh, you know, the, the real real estate in general is just, crazy absolutely crazy but i can imagine what it's like for you in in new in luxury home building could you mm. tell us a little bit more of what your market is like right now florida is crazy i think on average they're probably saying i think a thousand people a day or something are moving down here or buying down here now uh it's like a lot of other areas from what i've heard you know as far as very low inventory uh very high demand right now uh, in, in especially construction, there's, we can't really on the construction side, keep up with the demand. Uh, I'm kind of right now, there's certain people I'm working with others. I'm not, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of going and making the right fit with the builds we're doing right now, long story short, but um, you know, we don't it supplies with materials, stuff like that. I'm starting to see some issues with material, not major yet, but kind of makes you have that fear of what's going to happen in the future. If this keeps up, yep. uh, real estate, let's go to that. And now as far as Florida, our market down in Southwest Florida, Naples, Marco Island area is just nuts. Uh, a lot of people finding in, in the difference this time around, I think is people are finding more of their permanent or, you know, kind of their permanent home or, you know, it's not so much of like, I think in 2005, 2006, there was more investment stuff more flipping or mm -hmm. turning going on versus now it's more forever home where uh, let's have, we deal with a lot of snowbirds down here. So a lot of people from the North coming for the winter and stay six months out of the year down here. So it's a lot of people doing that. Uh, so it's, it's been very busy, uh, which is good. And it's like we talked about before we started, you kind of got to get it while you can as far as in the building world too, um, because it's not always like this. So it's a, it's been a good thing. It's just keeping up and 
keeping busy, that's for sure. Right. And now you said it's a family business, right? So Cor- you grew up in it. Yeah, correct. Correct. Grew up in it since I was a little kid. So, uh, out original, originally from Illinois, outside of Chicago, my dad, uh, was in the concrete business, started his own very hardworking guy, started his own company from nothing, built that up and then went into custom homes. And so us as kids, my dad was always the guy that was, he was always working, uh, I always tell the story, you know, as kids, he was always there when it mattered. It wasn't, you know, sporting events, stuff like that. First thing I do is look up in the stands, make sure my mom and dad were there. They were there. So he was there, but he was a workaholic. Uh, and he's kind of instilled that in me and in all in my other siblings as well growing up because he always made us work, uh, whether it was like sweeping job sites, digging ditches, doing like small odds and ends just learning different things, but, you know, always working for what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, it was a thing I'm grateful back then. I wasn't so grateful for it as a kid, obviously your friends are going, having fun, and then you're stuck working on job sites in the sun and so on. And, but now I, I'm the older I get, obviously the more grateful I am for it because it's instilled kind of that work, work ethic in me to where, you know, I, I work hard. I really do. I just, I, and now I enjoy what I do too, as far as the construction business and real estate as well. No, you and I have very similar backgrounds when you actually gave me your bio. I was just, I was raised by a mother who did real estate and like from a young age, especially my younger brother, he would go on listing appointments, my mom, <sighs> you know, he'd map it out when there was still no navigation system and you had to use the Thomas guide. <laughs> so those were the those were the days, you know, you're probably still much younger than my brother. So but yeah, that was the case. But it really instilled so much in us. We all got our real estate license at 18. And there's, you know, sometimes you like exactly what you said. When we're doing the audit or what we feel is the oddest thing, it ended up working out in our favor because mm-hmm. now, you know, it's like a 30-year business and it keeps giving back to us, even just on a referral base. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Well, I agree. I agree. Definitely. I mean, it's like, I always, I always say this uh, construction with me was like a love hate thing. I hated it as a kid, but now I love it now. And, and that's the thing you growing up when, you know, I remember my dad used to make me do the dumbest stuff. Now being in the business, I realized it was pointless, like moving cement blocks from one side of a lot to the other side of the lot, just to keep me busy. He would do the, you know, have me do these things and, 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 you know, I played football and so on. And he's like, oh, it's going to make you stronger. But also he would make me do just all different types of jobs. And me back then, you know, you didn't appreciate it as much, but now I appreciate it a lot because I learned so much about this, the business yeah. that a lot of people don't know. You know, you can be book smart with construction, but in reality, uh, hands-on experience, there's nothing better. And having that hands-on experience in the business and then it, it's helped me with real estate as well because I can look at homes, I can see how they're built, I can help answer those questions on the construction side of things, I can take care of little small things that most realtors can't that you know may affect a closing that an inspector finds or something and I have the contacts and so on. So. Mm-hmm. It's kind of you, it's helped me big time with my career now. And I enjoy, like, like I said, I enjoy construction. I enjoy designing homes and watching them kind of from the ground up, take shape. And, and, you know, it's just, it's an amazing thing to do. So let me ask you, if construction was a family business, you were the one that went into real estate after. So your dad would build, your father would build the homes, but it wasn't until you entered into the market. Did you even like sell the homes or was that something your father did as well? So, um, so family business. Yeah. So I was always in construction working for my dad. I was kind of, I would call myself his grunt. My dad was a military guy. So it was, uh, I was kind of the one that did the odds and ends growing up. There was one point I went to college. Uh, and then when I gra- or I went back to college after, you know, taking some time away from college and working again, but went back to college, graduated, came back home because I was broke. 
uh, and started working for my dad again. Well, with having a college degree, digging ditches, doing those odds and ends and everything wasn't something I wanted to keep doing. Uh, and it, my dad's a type that, you know, he's going to make you work until, you know, then he's going to say, all right, go to the next thing and get some opportunities. So I, anyway, I started kind of looking into other jobs and opportunities in sales. I've had sales experience, uh, even before graduating college, I went on a little, I sold cars. I was very successful at it. I've had other sales jobs and hospitality stuff, so on. But, um, I started looking at sports jobs, a big sports fan, looking at working for baseball teams, football teams, whatever I could find, uh, as a sales position. So I actually pretty much was about to get a job and it was with the Miami Marlins at the time. And then he kind of stepped in and he's like, what are you doing? Like, you know, that wouldn't be the smart decision. Go get your real estate license. You know, you can work selling our stuff and then also you can sell real estate as well. There's a lot of money to be made in real estate. You're good at sales, you know, construction, you know, houses more than anybody. And he goes, why wouldn't you go do this? So I'm like, yeah, you're right. Why not? So let's do it. So I got my real estate license and they kind of mesh very well. Uh, real estate and construction go hand in hand. And obviously me being on our sales side benefits us because yeah. obviously he's not paying me the percentages like a realtor would get, so, <laughs> you know, and I'm not getting paid like that. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's benefited us in that direction, but also like me having opportunity, like if we're building somebody a house and they need to sell their past house, or if somebody needs an empty lot to build a house on, that's where I've capitalized in the real estate side of things yeah. too, to where it's like, you know, play the cards you've been dealt is a big thing in my mind that I go fr- go off of constantly and a lot of different things I've done have spanned off the construction side of things. Like I do a home watch side little business too. Uh, I'm doing the real estate. I almost got into rentals, but there's only one of me. I kind of pumped the brakes on that one. So <laughs> until maybe in the future, but uh, I can't get too crazy. I got to slow down and kind of let things play out. You know, you know what I mean? Right. No, who knows where it all takes us, you know, because- yeah. That's what, you know, we were having this conversation of like, you know, on top of our real estate businesses, you know, we've both taken on like podcasts, like where do you find the time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And you did say, you know, you've got to just sometimes make the time, you know what I mean? You really want to do something. Is there any, you know, uh, I'm finding more and more that a lot of people are jumping, you know, either into video content marketing and all that kind of stuff. What was your, your reason for starting the Real Build? Uh, there wasn't, so I had a friend that was doing podcasting, podcasting always kind of intrigued me because I was, I started listening to podcasts pretty in depth, probably want to say three years ago now, four years ago, maybe now. And, and I was, you know, kind of going in more towards, I was like, man, this is, I mean, this is cool. You can do a podcast. You can kind of be your own radio host technically, you know, and talk about what you want. And people are from all over the world can listen to you. This is, and I had a good friend that had a popular podcast and I was talking to him about it. And he was like, just jump in and do it. Don't think too much. Cause most people, they'll, they'll just overthink podcasting and, they never end up doing it because they're trying to find, okay, what should I do my podcast about? What should, so after talking to him, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I think I bought the cheapest microphone at the time. And uh, then I just, this was two years ago now, crazy how much time's flown since I started mine. But it was um, one of those things where I was like, yeah, content's important. I knew it. I was starting to do more video stuff too, but I, I I wanted to kind of add to what I was doing. So I was like, why not? So I started looking into it. I looked into construction podcasts. There wasn't many on kind of teaching customers Mm -hmm. what to look for uh, in the construction industry. A lot of coaching stuff, like how to be a contractor, a better contractor, same with real estate. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, Tom Ferry style real estate podcasts where how to be a good real estate agent, stuff like that. Not so much customer oriented where 
what should a customer look for in the real estate world too. So I was like, boom, why not just do something that kind of helps customers. But if you're helping customers, it's also going to help agents and builders, yeah, you know, absolutely. cause you're going to get people on and have that discussion about how they take care of their clients and so on. So why not start something like that? So that's when the real build kind of concept was born. Uh, at first it was rough. I'll admit it, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> very uh, scripted and not like a conversation like we're having now. Uh, it was just not open discussion, very scripted, very kind of bland and boring. I don't know. I, I don't even like listening to my first original episode. <laughs> uh, you get better with time. And so anybody that's thinking about doing it, just do it. That's my advice. But on the video content side, I'm big on that. And that's another whole nother topic we can get into too, as far as video and all that. But podcasting, if you're thinking about doing that, just hop in. It's, it's a good time and you get to meet people like yourself. So right. it's been, yeah, it's been, in, I started 8 billion in October and mm. mine was more of a, like a passion project. I just so happened to be in, in real estate, but now even just in the last two days, you and two other people have just been real estate. And it, and 8 billion really is, it's, it, it's a, the premise of it is always going to be about people pursuing their passions and purpose. And a lot of it sometimes has to do with like, you know, sometimes coming from great adversity mm-hmm. and, and that sometimes becomes the fuel to becoming your best self. Mm-hmm. And if you've had a series of different things that have happened in your life, what would you see has attributed to some of the greatest success for you? It's, it's been everything. Cause I'm a very forward thinking person and it's, it, there's a lot of things in my life that have been good life lessons that have kind of pushed me forward to where I am today. Uh, you know, there's been the football injury, um, you know, having to figure out where I can, where I needed to go from there after just playing football forever and relying on that for so many years and not really thinking about school and stuff. When you're an athlete, I mean, you're dedicated to that sport. You're dedicated. I mean, my life was football. So it's like going from that to now what? And then I was, I almost went in the military because I come from, you know, I had a dad that was a Marine. He was an expert. He was a Marine out. He was in Vietnam and I had a grandpa that was a Marine that was in world war two. So I felt like obligated, like, all right, I'm the next one up. Maybe I should go in the Marines. Cause at the time when I got done with football, kind of got back your bro, your broke college your ex college kid at the time. Cause I left and, uh, after football, cause I was like, what's the point? I'm not playing anymore. It was one of those kind of mm-hmm. stages in my life. Like, where do I go? And, and so I almost did that. My dad actually talked me out or he's like, absolutely not. After what I went through and especially in Vietnam and how that was, he's like, there's no way I would ever. And at that time, I think it was Iraq was obviously going on at that time when I was thinking about it. So he's like, I would never allow you to do that. Not a chance. So he talked me out of it and I ended up getting into the car business and so on whole nother story, but that's where kind of the sales end of things really progressed. I learned a lot there, a lot of life lessons that I didn't know as a 20 year old kid. And then, you know, I, I went back to college. I had my, I had a car accident at one point. That was another life lesson that I had that I should not have been driving. Drinking was involved. Mm. Uh, and that was not a good decision on my part. You know, that's, it's a, it was a tough thing that happened. Nobody was injured. I didn't get into it with anybody else, but I, it was just a solo accident, but I should not be here. And it's one of those kind of things where you think about it and you reflect on it. And it's like, how did I end up like I was like, there was one little small guardrail. I was going 55 the opposite way. And I completely, my truck 360 and ended up over that one and only guardrail that stopped me from going into water and trees. So you really think about somebody was looking out for you big time, but that lesson right there was to, to grow the hell up too. at that point after losing my vehicle and everything and going through that and having, obviously having the father that I do and the mother that I do that, you know, they're like, you're, you got to figure it out, you know, life lesson, figure it out. 
Um, you know, I, I didn't have money. I was in college at the time. I went back to college to finish. I was at university of South Florida, didn't have a vehicle and basically was working in bars doing security and stuff like that. But, um, when my dad needed me, he, he would, he'd say, I need you come down here. Well, how do I get down there? I don't have a car. And it was a three and a half hour trip from Tampa down to this way or three hours. And, and he's like, well, take a bus. So I actually had to take a bus home <laughs> from there. So that was another yeah thing. So, I mean, it's just these, all these little things. I mean, I went through divorce uh, two years ago. Uh, that was another life lesson to me that really, I started, the reason I did it is I personally was the one that did the divorce. And the reason I did was because I, at the time I was really reflecting on life. I was really getting into self development, personal development. And the person that I was with was not a positive person. And it, I started seeing that I wasn't myself and who I used to be, uh, as far as personality wise, everything. And also I was seeing that I was being held back a lot in a lot of different ways in a lot of, it was just a lot of stuff all compiling at once. I, you know, I was in, I'm in an entrepreneurial group called Arte Syndicate and being around, these are high level entrepreneurs and being around them, seeing how they operate, like all these things were going through my head at that time. So I ended up getting divorced and when I, and it, I, it wasn't an easy situation. I don't have kids, which would have made it harder, but uh, divorce isn't easy in general. And that was one of those kind of life things that really, it was hard doing it and it was hard making the choice because not a lot of guys would make that choice or not a lot of people in general, I should say guys and girls because they're comfortable. Yeah. Uh, you know, most people live in comfort and I'm kind of viewed myself as not one of those people. Uh, and I had to make that change and that change led to a lot of progression, a lot of great things that happen without, you know, going for hours on this. So <laughs> to answer your questions. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you have an amazing story and, and, Actually, when you said personal development, that was going to be one of my questions, because typically what you find in a lot of people who have great success, there are rough roads, right? But sometimes, I mean, in most cases, it's triggered, uh, you know, once they go through that rough patch, a lot of them actually go through personal development. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's either, you know, personal development, it's a spiritual awakening, it's so many different things. Um, and then I was going to ask you, uh, what, what was it like in personal development that you did? Did you take a course? Did you read books? What was it? That, that it you? was a lot of over time. It was a lot of spiritual, mental, personal, physical, everything was like, it was all compiled in one. And it was a lot of, I start, I went to, um, you know, a 10 X growth conference, uh, at one point too, and seeing some of those guys and being around some people there. And then, you know, I was, I've always been a big fan of, uh, Andy Frasilla. He had the MFCO project. I was a big listener on his podcast and then, uh, listening to that and becoming big fan of his. And then I got kind of tuned into Ed Milet, who's another big, uh, time influence on me as far as personal growth and stuff and following I really started altering kind of what I followed and listened to and stuff like that. I don't know. It was kind of a pattern and that pattern led to, okay, now let's spend some money on my self growth too, because I started, you know, listening to people that are kind of successful in business, stuff like that. They're saying, invest in yourself, invest in yourself. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do that for once. I'm going to invest in me, see where this goes. Uh, Arte syndicate was one of those investments and then getting around other entrepreneurs that were very like-minded as me, uh, and meeting them in person. And then some of them seeing them and their, how their marriages were and their significant others were. And, you know, when they, we had a live event, one of the things too, that really started making me think is we had a live event for that group and my, my significant other at the time didn't want to go, didn't want anything to do with it. And so that kind of started making me think too, because I'm like, all these guys are here. They're all successful. They all have their partner there. 
that wants to be there, that wants to be a part of that, that wants to grow with them and also have personal growth too. I'm like, what am I doing? So it's like all these things started kind of compiling up and then it's just like, I don't know, I, I'm a believer in God. I'm a believer in how he works on you over time and so on. And I started just seeing all these different things and like uh, videos, like uh, one Ed Milet video that stood out to me. That's why I keep referencing him as he, he, he was talking about the power of choice mm -hmm. and we all make major choices in our lives. Probably going to be like three major choices that are going to really project you up or project you down or kind of keep you stagnant. And you're going to remember those choices for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, and they're, cause they're going to have such a major impact. Then he talked about the rocking chair test. Basically when you're an older person sitting in a rocking chair with your grandkids around you and stuff, are you going to have regrets at that time that you didn't do those or make those certain choices in different ways? Or are you going to be happy where you're at? And so I really started kind of thinking that because he even said to you blink and you're five years old or 10 years older. And it's like, time's just flying and it's like, where are we going to be? If, are we going to be stuck in that same choice, that same pattern and just accept where we're at? Or are we going to try and live the better life that we can live? And that was one of those major moments in my life where I'm like, okay, I need to figure this out. I had a lot of support during that situation during my divorce, uh, family, which is what you need during a situation like that too. Yeah. And, um, it, it was, uh, yeah, I'm a big advocate on, like I said, just power of choices, doing the things that aren't easy. The mm -hmm. things that aren't, aren't the easy things are usually what gets you the, ahead the most. So, I mean, like now I'm doing 75 hard, which is a challenge, uh, on top of everything else I'm doing 75 hard. I don't know if people know what that is. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, could you briefly share what 75 <laughs> hard is? <laughs> I'm actually on day 68 today, so I'm, I'm almost done, but um, it's uh, basically two workouts a day. One has to be outdoors, both 45 minutes a piece. Uh, you have to read 10 pages of a kind of a business book or success, but you know, some kind of, book like that uh related to that you also have to drink a gallon of water a day which i do normally wow. uh, i'm a big water person and then you also have no cheat meals and no alcohol at all for <laughs> 75 days straight yeah i'm assuming this was a new year's resolution yeah, not really. No, it was something. And then one last thing too, you have to take a progress picture, which is, it's easy, seems easy, but a lot of people forget that. And if you miss one of the tasks within those 75 days, you have to start all over again. So it wasn't a new year's thing. I started right after new year's. I've been wanting to do it for like a couple of years now. Okay. I just kept making excuses in my head of why not to, uh, but it's just one of those things that it's really not easy, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and, uh, especially cause it's more, it's, it's not like a lot of people say it's more of a fitness thing, but it's not, it's more mental than anything because it's trying to structure your day, uh, into being able to complete all these little tasks and they're not little, but all these major tasks to kind of before you go to sleep. And if you fall asleep without doing them, you got to start yeah. over, you know, so it's <laughs> on top of construction, on top of real estate, on top of podcasts. Yes, yes, yes. And, yeah. You'd yeah. be amazed what the human, what you can do humanly. I, I, yeah. I just finished a 90 day mastermind course and all of us, you know, we all have professional lives and businesses and we, at the very end of the 90 days, we were just like, yeah, we, all of us surprised ourselves at how much you can actually get done when you put your mind to it. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like me. We talked about though. A lot of people have the excuses of, I don't have time, stuff like that, which I get it. You know, some people are like, well, you don't have kids, you don't have this, but I know a lot of people that do have kids that have done 75 hard. They have significant others that can give them that 45 minutes to go for an outdoor walk because one of your workouts has to be outside. It can be a walk, uh, you know, or go to the gym in the morning or drop the kids off at school, then go to the, you know, there's, you always have time. And that's the thing. Everybody's excuses. I don't have time. 
But what this challenge has really done for me is realize how important time is. Uh, yeah. it's, it's crazy because obviously not having a drink, not doing that, your clarity, your mental clarity is insane. But because um, there's nothing wrong with having a drink. I like having a drink, especially being in the construction <laughs> business. I need one on a Friday. So, you know, it's just. So day 76, I'm going to be like, cheers, Bill. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, but that's the thing is like, I have such a more respect for time and how I structure my day and, and just how I get things done. And I mean, it's like, I blink and it's like 1230 at night. I'm, I'm not a napper. I, I don't like napping. I'm just like, I can probably operate off like six and a half hours of sleep. Six, six hours is pushing it. You can get a little cranky. Yeah. Extra Starbucks, whatever. But, um, it's, it's just, it really makes you have appreciation because people's excuses are always, I don't have the time for that. But then I, I kind of look at myself and what I'm doing and I'm like, that guy's telling me he doesn't have the time. How do you not have the time? You have one job. I'm working about three or four of them at different, at different times. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So you just have to dedicate yourself to do it. So yeah, no, congratulations on all the success that you've been having. And on, on top of that, I just want to congratulate you early because I know you are going to make it to 75 days if you come out. Oh, there's no turning days. back now. Yeah, no turning back, <laughs> I'm right? so close. Yeah. And I just, I'm making sure with that progress picture, because that's the, that's the thing. I, I had a friend too that missed the project picture on like day 72 and he, and he, almost kept going and then he even said because you start it really starts messing with your mind like I really didn't do this I missed the progress picture so then he came out and he's like yeah I missed the project progress picture on 72 I'm starting all over Wait, I don't so know did, do, is it a group that keeps you accountable or is uh, it no I mean you can, there is some people that do that I started with uh, there was one on Facebook that I was part of. Um, but I'm very, the way I am is I don't like to, if I start something, I don't like to fail, you know, yeah. it's like a mindset thing and I don't really need accountability too much. I I'm very good at like being controlled or, you know, as far as like, you know, not giving in to certain situations. Like I'm still, you're, you're supposed to still live a normal life with this. Like I've been to bars, but I, I'm that guy in the corner with a club soda and lime, you know, <laughs> like, you know, you just have to have self-control. I go out to dinner still, you know, everybody else is having cocktails. I have water and lime, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. you put yourself in those situations that are tough and you're around it and so on. And that's what makes it more challenging too. And, and it's, you know, I, people, if you do have accountability for something like this, I'd recommend it because then you can kind of be like, you know, cause I know people that uh, have done it without accountability and they mm -hmm. didn't make it a week. So, you know, the weekends are always the hardest they say too, obviously, and especially if you're a social person that has likes to go out and have cocktails, stuff like that. Um, people miss the water part. I mean, I just drink a lot of water, but, um, then there's other people that have struggles with the workout part, but, um, I naturally work out. I'd like, I like to work out in the morning cause it's a good start to my day. It gives me yeah. energy and so on. So, uh, there's just pieces that are tough though, especially if you have a long day and you got to come home and still do an outdoor walk at night. And yeah, so. And it's the same across the board, men and women. So one gallon of water for even women. Yeah, everybody's the same. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Gosh. yeah. Feels great. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I would have said was like, I want to try it, but I'm all like, I don't want that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I, I recommend this to everybody to at least do it once. I mean, it's, it's definitely something that everybody should try and commit to because it is – you know, you get people that are like, oh, that can't be that bad. You know, I don't really drink. I don't really, I can work out twice a day. I can do on a walk, but it's not the workout part and all that. It's the structuring. Yeah. It's the mental part, like getting everything structured in your day. It really does mentally mess with you in a lot of ways too, because you are tired. You are, there's days that you don't want to do stuff, but you, you just have to go. You have to do it. Absolutely. So.
Amazing. Amazing accomplishment. <laughs> it's not done five. yet. I still have some not days done left. Yet. <laughs> Seven more days, but I will yeah. be the first to congratulate you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Let me ask you, I know you're a busy man and, you know, I, I know your time is super precious, but let me ask you, what are you looking forward to? I mean, we've already completed most of the first quarter of 2021. Any big plans for 2020, you know, 2021 moving forward or even beyond that? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I want to obviously with building, we're we're busy as can be right now. I just want to keep building. I've I've kind of progressed us along with my brother into the higher, more luxury and homes again, to where that's kind of our specialty. People are calling us for it. We're kind of that known brand for that. Uh, which is what I want. I'd like to kind of expand us further, um, making more of a push in the Naples area. We're, we're mostly majority on Marco Island right now, which is really close to Naples, but it's just, uh, I'd like to slowly keep expanding the company and growth wise too. I know it takes time for that. Uh, we've grown, you know, a good amount the last couple of years too, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, real estate wise, I mean, I'm just trying to do as much as I can on the real estate end uh, and I enjoy it. I just was like we we talked about prior. I was just showing a house right before I rushed to, you know, you know, hopped in the car to come here. And it's amazing how you can sell a property on a FaceTime call these days, which yeah. is which was what I was doing FaceTiming because they're up north. So it's 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 the real estate end. I want to keep pushing forward on that. I had a very good real estate year last year as far as sales volume. And then same with construction. Construction is going to be better this year. Uh, as far as our numbers, uh, it was really good last year. So happy with that podcast, uh, continued growth with that. Like I said, I started a sports card kind of thing cause that's made a comeback. So, uh, just open an LLC on that. And then, uh, so trying to eventually do some content with that. And also, um, yeah, that was, I mean, it's one piece at a time, uh, 75 hard. I got seven days left. So that's, that's going to be a major thing. So yeah. And realizing there's only one of me. So I'm just trying to, um, do as much as I can. Uh, and you know, to have the right pieces in place to be able to do it and continue to grow and personally continue to grow and faith and everything like that too. I'm, I'm just big on that. Well, like I said, you, uh, you're an amazing person, human being all, all you. around, right? <laughs> Both professionally, personally, in every aspect of your life, you know, and, and what I wanted to ask you is, do you have any parting words for the audience? You know, a lot of these people look for ins inspiring stories, um, especially from, you know, examples like you. If there's some parting words that you could, you know, say to the audience, give them advice from here on out. I know everyone's been through quite, quite the ringer in the last year. Yeah. Um, my advice, I mean, it's just, like I said, I'm very forward thinking. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I mean, my expectation for myself is, is huge. I mean, and that's the way everybody else should be too. set goals that are, you know, higher than you ever think you can possibly reach. I'm big on that. Like I'm not even close. I'm not even touching the surface of where I want to be. And, and I know you have to be patient. I used to be the most impatient person growing up. Uh, I used to be, and, and that's kind of the way a lot of society is now today is, you know, people are instant gratification. We're filled with that. We think we can, you know, somebody can just make money overnight. It's not that way. You really have to put in the work and not a lot of people like to hear that. But you have to, you have to do the things that aren't comfortable. You have to be uncomfortable constantly to get ahead. And, you know, it's like with video, like I, when I first started video, I wasn't comfortable doing video. I, it took me 10 takes to even launch one video. And I barely even launched that. It took me a week to launch that video because I was worried about what the, what other people were thinking or their opinions and so on. But when you get past caring 
I guess, about other people's opinions and their thoughts, just like with podcasting too, you know, it's like when you get past caring and, and just do it, it's like, it just becomes naturally. Now I I'll edit videos. I don't really, doesn't take me long to edit. I'm not really looking at every little detail. I just edit as much as I can put my intros in the outros. And then I just launch it out. Okay. There. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. And it used to be to where I'd be like looking at every little detail being like, ah, that doesn't look good. Oh, what if I said that? Or what if somebody thinks this? And it's like, you know, it's easier said than done, you know, me talking about this. Cause there is a lot of people that are uncomfortable out there. They're uncomfortable behind a camera or just taking a picture in general, but you have to get by that. Cause it's that being uncomfortable that makes you comfortable. Yes. You know, and, and doing it constantly and the consistency and, and just just breaking kind of out of that trend of normalcy and kind of doing the things that and go back to the video thing. I'm kind of hopping around here. Like I used to think like, all right, I'm doing this video, this and that. Who's going to watch this? But then when you run into people, random people that meet you and stuff and say, hey, I saw your video on 20 things to look for in the construction industry or hey, I listened to your podcast on this. That was a great episode or hey, your video was funny about the seawalls or whatever. I get that all the time now. And I'm like, wow, you're watching my stuff. That's, that's cool. You know, and it's like good to hear. And I never, you get a lot more positive than you do negative. You do. And a lot of people think they're going to get more negative than po- it's not how it works. If you get out of your shell, I mean, you're doing a lot more than a lot of people. Yeah. So just think about it that way. And that's going to impress more people. So Absolutely. that's my little advice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for me though, it was like, um, w- when I used to get so nervous turning on the camera lights and everything, I just remembered, I was like, this is when I start this podcast, this message was always going to be for everyone else. So mm-hmm. I was like, it's not for you anymore, Lisa. This is for someone else. And if yeah. there's a message that will serve someone or help someone, then you've done your job because it's not about, oh, how am I going to look and all this kind of stuff. I mean, yes, of course, it's human nature. But when the message becomes for other people and for the benefit of others, it, it really just goes volume. Well, what you said right there is business 101. When you start serving other people, your business gets better. I mean, when you stop worrying about yourself and the financials that are coming in and worrying about all you're worrying about is money, well, that's not going to help the customer. When you start caring about the customer, helping the customer, and that's like with us with the building side, I have a passion for it because I actually care. I care about helping the client as far as design, what's going to resell, what's going to be the best fit for them. If they don't need something, why spend the money? You know, I just had a guy the other day who was talking about an infinity edge or a vanishing edge on a pool. His house is going to be on a canal. I said, save the money. That's like $8,000, $10,000 more for a pool with the, you know, and I was like, you can put that money somewhere else in the house if you want to spend it. You know, a normal builder would be, well, if it's on the plan, I'll build it, you know, but it's, if it's on a canal, you don't get that effect of the water dropping off into the ocean. You want it on an open view for those of you that are listening. You know, <laughs> Drop more about. Yeah. So, you know, so it's, it's, it's just helping people when you switch, switch from, and you know, a lot of these guys on social media talk about are entrepreneurs too. When you switch to more giving value and, and more about helping the person and help and actually caring for your customer, I guarantee you sell more and have a more successful business over time than you caring about money up front, hands down, guarantee it. Absolutely. Yes. I can completely agree because if everyone have always asked me, what is the main, me- you know, like, what is the message that you've gotten from all your guests? I said, yes, they have all served people and, and mm-hmm. everything in life has come back tenfold. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an amazing law of the universe, but it really yeah. works. Yeah. No, it's, it's how everything re- it reciprocates around. It literally is when you serve people and you go above and beyond. I'm big advocate on that. Just doing the right thing, going above and beyond, being honest big on honesty, especially in the construction industry. There's so much dishonesty, uh, even in the real estate industry. It's like when you're honest, you tell people, you know, I just got done with the guy I'm working with showing four or five different properties over time through FaceTime, 
one of them, I was just finally, I just said to him cause the price kept going up cause of bidding and stuff like that. I'm like, listen, this house for the size and the location and everything you're doing right now, it's not worth what they're going to get. I'm yeah. telling you that right now, something, something will pop up, you know, and, and I just, sorry, I had a little MLS notification, but I go something, <laughs> it has something will pop up, you know, over time I go, you just have to be patient. And what happened today? Boom. Something pops up exactly what he's looking for with a view and it's actually less expensive. So, you know, just being honest time, uh, telling people just be patient or in a crazy market, sometimes that benefits you better. I mean, it just works out in the long run, but you as a business person, you have to be patient sometimes too. Not a lot of us have it, unfortunately. Yeah, I hear you on that one. But Bill, you have shared so many things. Your experience, your stories, you've dropped some gems, a lot of gems, <laughs> right? And then some advice for those people, for the audience that wants to take it and hopefully it inspires so many, which I know that will. Mm. Thank you so much for being on the 8 Billion Podcast. I know that you're a very busy man and have other contracts to write and <laughs> the rest of the world to conquer and seven more days left. Of seven yeah. Days, right? Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much. And again, you are always welcome on the 8 Billion Podcast. If you ever want to come back, share more things and give us updates. Yes. Yeah. I'll definitely come back. Thank you for having me on. I'm, I'm glad I can be here today and, and I hope I helped some people out today too. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If it's moved you in any way, please review and share your thoughts or text me your thoughts at 949-247-2800.